837. Welcome to Cusco City, another flight on time. For your safety in accordance with regulation, you should remain seated. We are in Cusco, Peru. We flew in, we're about 11,200 feet up. We went up 2,000 more feet, we're about 13,000 feet up. And before I pass out, I want to take this video of the city of Cusco. Beautiful. This is the gateway to Machu Picchu, which we will be visiting tomorrow. You can see all the red roofs. So the main square is right there. And we'll be staying right near that main square when we get back to Cusco. But uh, this is quite a view. Sprinkling a little bit here, but look at that. Now we visited this, that cathedral yesterday, and it's one of the most beautiful cathedrals that I've ever seen. Um, normally, I take pictures inside cathedrals and I film. Uh, even when they say I'm not supposed to, I usually do. But they had too many security guards watching for people like me. So unfortunately, I didn't uh, film or take pictures, but it is beautiful. And this is another church over here, which we're going to visit a little later. And I forgot the name of it. And it does take some time to get adjusted to the altitude. But once you're adjusted, um, it's a pretty cool place to be. And you're just surrounded by mountains, red roofs everywhere. And this is one of the main streets right here. And that is Cusco, Peru. Beautiful day. Once again, the main cathedral. Another church. In the corner is the hotel that we stayed at last night. Great location. But they have a 9 o'clock checkout time. Let me repeat that. 9 a.m. checkout time. And the reason is, and a lot of uh, hotels in Peru do that, have early checkout times, is because they have very early check-in times. Uh, there's a lot of early flights, so you can check in at 10 a.m., which is nice, because in the States, usually it's 3 p.m. But the disadvantage is you have to check out early. So 9 a.m., I've traveled all around the world, and that is the earliest I've ever had to check out. But it's okay. It's such a beautiful town here. This to me is the real deal, Cusco. This to me represents Peru. Um, just the old buildings and the churches and the hills. Um, it's really, really a beautiful town. So glad we made it here. So right outside our hotel in the main square, we saw these, uh, looks like construction, but it looks like they actually found some more Inca stones uh, here in Cusco. So they got closed off a couple of blocks or a block here. A lot of Inca history in Cusco. Are there any skeletons here? That's what I would like to see. So we're just walking around. Uh, I can feel the altitude a little bit. Um, I have my Peruvian hat on, which is actually nice because it's a little cool here tonight. And tomorrow we're taking the full uh, half day city tour. Looking forward to that. Uh, until then, adios.
but it's not many groups. But look at my friends on the right side walls. That's original Inca foundation. We will see the other temples. You will have better option for the pictures too. But in this moment, we are in the temple of the rainbow. The Incas worship the rainbow. The Incas worship the natural phenomena. Look at in the right side wall, the trapezoidal niches. Those niches were used to put something like statues and idols during the Incan times. Those were the idols made in solid gold, in solid silver, according to Garcilaso de la Vega. Now I know why the Garcilaso said this was a temple of the rainbow, because in 1920, they found a lot of Seychelles conscious fragment pieces of seashells conchels. You know why? Because the Incas were using, when they were coming to worshiping, the seashells conchels connection with the water rituals. In the seashells, you fill it up the water, you start blowing, in comes the rainbow. This is why Garcilaso called the temple of the rainbow. The right shape wall is original, but look at the main niche. There was a main altar, they call Usnus, like a kind of altar that the Incas they were worshipping in there. In this case, like we saw in the model, the Incas were having a human statue in solid gold in that niche. I was telling you the Spaniards being here, they're stalling, they took other statues, other figurines for the other temples, but how about that human statue? Manco Inca keeping secret. Manco Inca, after he lost his first battle in Saxe, one more place we are going now, he knew about this human statue, he said, I don't want to give that human <coughs> statue of solid gold to the Spaniards. I want to keep with me some andesite volcanoes formation stone. So the quarry of this type of stones comes from 20 kilometers south Cusco, the quarry, Rumi Colga quarry. So today we know the Incas use those protuberance to transport the rocks, to transport the stones. But the guys, let's continue. I want to try something more in the temple. these streets, these stairs to St. Blas, San Blas, I'm not even sure what it is, but um, we were told to go there, and being 11,000 feet up, you know, we've been here high altitude for about four days, it's still a little difficult, and we gotta go up there. This is the Templo de San Blas, Temple of San Blas. 
And as I said, we were recommending to go here. And I think we're going to try to get inside. But just look at the surrounding area here. It's pretty cool. Very quaint. Well, we made it to the top. We went inside the temple. And this is the view from the tower of Cusco. And that is the main cathedral from the rear, I believe. So when I got up here, I had to take some uh, oxygen, drink a little water. Every step can be difficult at the high altitude. My back has been killing me this whole trip. It was hurting before I left. And carrying a heavy backpack 12 hours a day doesn't help. But that's what aspirin and Aleve is for. One last look at Cusco in the evening. It is cold out. It's probably low 40s Fahrenheit. Are we across from a disco?